Welcome back, everyone. I'm sitting down today with Nevin Prithiani. Nevin, thank you for welcoming me in your home. Thank you. Pleasure thank in you for Bangkok. Coming. I love it. It's a beautiful place. And we thought we would do a second interview today. We did a few ones before. One last year, I came to your place again. We talk about press action. Right. We'll link that below if you, if you guys want to check it out. We did one after also on how to plan your success, which was really loved by people here on the channel. And so today, I want to talk about something that you are very good at, which is how to trade to get more freedom. I think that's a goal a lot of people want to have. So for people not doing you right now, tell people who you are, what you do, and a bit of background about yourself. Okay, um, well, well, you know, obviously my name is Naveen Prithiani. Uh, I am a senior trader at forexwatchers.com and a uh, mentor and educator at urbanforex.com uh, and CEO of Black Tower Investments Limited in Hong Kong. So, um, uh, so you know, th that's my background and uh, I think that question that you asked about uh, freedom, um, to, to, to me, maybe that word is a little bit unique because uh, a lot of people get into this industry thinking this is a way out. Yeah. But to actually do this successfully, you got to go all in right. instead of a little bit in to look for a way out. It's it's sort of like an oxymoron, like it's controversial, like it, it doesn't work that way. That's my experience, yeah. obviously. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, there's a lot of hard work that needs to be put in uh, um, uh, because, you know, y you know, you can go to college, you can uh, graduate from high school, you can get a job and make some money. Then you can go to university, get a bachelor's degree, you can make a little bit more money. You can go get a master's, make a little bit more money, a PhD, a lot more money. But then in Forex, there's no such thing as if I learn a little bit more, I'll make a little bit more money. Yeah. It's either you make money or you don't. It's basically you go straight PhD or you don't. Like you don't make any money at all. So there, there is no, if I learn a little bit, I'll make a little bit of money. There, there's no such thing as that. It's either you make it or you don't, you know. So I think uh, when you look at it in that perspective, there is no, I'm going to half-ass it. Uh, sorry for using yeah. that word. I, you can't half it, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think it's something like you mentioned of the fact that you have to go all in. So it's kind of a different shift in your lifestyle too. Like you might be more free to travel, do whatever you want, have some fun. Like you've been traveling a lot recently, which is uh, pretty cool. Mm. So tell people about it a little bit, um, those travels and everything you do. Well, traveling has been, you know, a passion of mine since I was a child. So, you know, that, that didn't come from the work side of things, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, trading in general helped me to do that. Uh, you know, it's not, a, it's not a bad thing. I don't look at them as connected, but at the same time, it's, you know, I also feel blessed that because I'm a trader, I have the ability to travel a little bit more easier because I don't need to sign a piece of paper saying, can I take a week off uh, three months from now? Yeah. You know, like, so uh, I do have that uh, a little bit of flexibility there. Um, but yeah, um, because trading is more internet based, I'm very, very uh, uh, conscious about where I'm going based on time zone in terms of uh, you know, where are you going to trade? And it does a time zone line up with when you're awake and alive, you know, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you don't want to do it in the middle of the night when you're really tired or exhausted. So uh, I'm very conscious of that. Yeah. So. And one thing that I think I've noticed for myself over time is that the more discipline and effort you put in trading, the more freedom you can have. So it's like, it's like the opposite. Like people expect to gain freedom, but they, they have to put in more work to gain freedom. Like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, as if, if we're being honest here, that's what, how I got in, thinking yeah. this is my way out. And then it turned out to be quicksand, and it got dragged in more and more and more to a point where I'm like, I was working eight hours a day at my other job. You know, I, I was working for a bank before, and now I'm doing close to 20 hours a day, four hours of sleep, and doing this over and over. I mean, I don't trade like that anymore, but I spent so much time into it that... Uh, I don't think uh, the average newcomer who comes to the industry realizes that there is no mid grounds. You actually have to put, go all in. Like I, like I, I don't know. That word just keeps coming into my yeah, mind. Of yeah. all, you got to go all in with all your might, all your energy. You got to use all your background of when someone said you can't do this. You got to bring that energy in there as well. You, whatever you have to do to get that fire going and saying I'm gonna do this, whether it takes one year, ten years, fifty years, uh, and you come with that mindset of uh, I gotta push. So yeah, uh, and there's no looking back. Yeah, and I fully so. agree with that for sure. Because I've been doing the same. There's like a sacrifice mode that you have to go through sometimes right. when you start. Mm -hmm. Not not like forever, but when you start. Right. And that is uh, required for anyone. So what was that phase for you? 
of like trying to make it work? What did you have to do exactly to make it work? Um, well, for, for the for the longest time, it was the knowledge part, right? Um, you know, my, my first phase was, I don't know what I'm doing. As much as I'm doing it, I don't know what I'm doing. So it's like, even if I'm sitting here 20 hours a day, if I'm if I don't know what I'm supposed to do, then I'm just wasting time, right? It's like going to the gym and you practice the wrong way. It's actually going to be harmful than hurt, you know, than beneficial. But so I was putting in a lot of hours. My mental capacity thinking, if I put in a lot of hours, I'll get the benefit from it. But you can't do it if you're doing it the wrong way. Um, and uh, obviously, there's not one single right way. There's multiple ways, but. I kept putting in the hours, doing the research, looking for techniques and strategies, what works best and how, basically what can I do that will always make money and never lose. So that was my mental uh, state at that point when I started. Then came to phase two, when I did have an idea of what I need to do, then stage two was a psychological barrier of, can you do this regularly? Can you do this frequently? Can you do this bigger, right? Because that's the next stage, it's like, Okay, you know, if you understand how the markets work, then why are you trading one mini lot? Mm. You know, step up your game, show me. So that inner voice keeps battling you saying, you know, what's the point of trading one mini lot? And come on, like do yeah. standard lots. Uh, and then that's the next psychological barrier that you have to overcome. Uh, uh, that because uh, up until a certain point, money has a story behind it, right? Like. Mm -hmm. You know, if you say I made five hundred dollars today, to some people that's rent, to some people that's shopping money, to some people it means nothing. Mm -hmm. But it, me it has a meaning, right? That that number has a meaning to many people. So in the beginning, you have to go through the psychological barrier to remove the meaning from the number that this is just a number. It doesn't matter. Uh, so that part was hard for me because, uh, as in, in university, I had no not much money to myself and every penny counted. So. Uh, it, Every time I made a loss, I actually felt it like, oh, yeah. that that meant that that's my rent or that's my food. And, you know, so I really felt it. Um, so uh, that psychological barrier is like the next phase that you have mm -hmm. to overcome. I'm really curious here because that's something that I see a lot of people have trouble with, the money mindset, if you can call it. Mm -hmm. So how did you kind of shift that? How did you learn that money was something that you could, like that, that you were not too attached to? How did that look like? Well, I, I don't know how that shift happened, but I do know that that was a big barrier in my life. Okay. Uh, it, it was a huge, huge factor in my life because, you know, you're, you're bombarded with, uh, you know, especially in college, right? You're like, mm -hmm. if I graduate, I'm going to get a job with this much salary. Now, whether someone says your salary is 30000 50000 or 100000 it's just a number. But what that means to you, right? Like 30,000 yeah. means this is my yeah. house, this is my car, this is my shopping. 50 means this is my house, this is my car, this is my shopping. Uh, so when you, when you think of it in that sense, uh, um, that stuck with me, I would say, for more than five years, where money up to $20,000, $25,000 had meaning. Uh, and breaking that barrier, I couldn't break it. So my hack was I'll move to India because $25,000 goes a long ways in a place mm -hmm. like India. But after a while, I started to realize, you know, that's that's not a way out. That's just cheating life, basically. Like, yeah. you have to break the barrier of the number means nothing. It's just a number. Uh, and then pushing through that. Uh, so that, that, that was a tough part for me. I would say even tougher than uh, learning what to do correctly. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is why some people say that what counts is not like the goal, the results you get, but the things you've built over time, the things like how you change over time when you achieve your goals. Right, right. So, so you know, uh, and, and, and I get that a lot too uh, when, when, when students ask me that, uh, okay, Naveen, what's the perfect strategy? What do I need yeah. to do? And then I'm like, you know what, even if I gave you the exact thing that I do, I'm sure you can't do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and in the beginning, they don't understand what that means. And that's normal. And they're not supposed to understand what that means because they don't have any exposure to there's a different angle to it. Yeah. So when you get the strategy that's supposed to be right, you got to put in the time and hours of it's like an archer. If he has to pull the arrow back and shoot it, I can explain that to you. Just hold the archer like this, pull the arrow back, let go. Your goal is to hit the middle uh, middle dot. That's the perfect strategy. But now can you do it? That, that pulling it back, that feeling, that stretching of how much should I pull and all that stuff, that's very difficult to master and that takes some time to do it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So the strategy is that's what you need to do, but the experience is now let's do it 500 times. 
Yeah. Uh, what happens is people go, they look for the strategy, they take the strategy, and when it doesn't work the third time, they quit. Mm-hmm. That's the part is the hardest one that I've seen time and time again, that people need to persevere. This is not an industry where you can call it quits, change your major, and then good luck and you'll get a job somewhere else. It's not like that. You have to persevere. Mm-hmm. So I was going to ask you, like, where are places where people fall when they apply? Like, so let's say you give them a strategy. Sure. Where do they fall? Is it when like being consistent with it, so doing it all the time, or is it something else? Um, they fall in the idea of understanding risk. See, so in the beginning, and this happens to me too, so I, I, you know, yeah, please put me in the same category of, mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. In the beginning, the, the mindset is only focused on opportunity. You're only looking for where can I make money? Where can I make money? Instead of, which is much later as an experienced trader, your, your objective is where can I not lose money? See, this two differences, one is trying to protect your money, the other one's trying to say where can I make money? The where can I make money attitude actually gets you into every trade, good ones and bad ones. And the bad ones, because of psychology in the beginning, will overrule the the good ones. So your losing trades will become bigger than your winning trades. And that cycle is very dangerous. So getting to that point where you need to realize you gotta protect your money instead of uh, you know make the money, um, or, or looking for opportunities time and time again, that needs to be, that there needs to be a shift in thinking. Yeah. So that's a major shift for most people. Like when they get this, yeah. they, they, they completely change. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, awesome. You are one of the, I would say one of the best people I know when it comes to explaining price action and how to trade price action. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of people that say they trade price action online, but they don't, really don't, or okay. they don't know how to explain it, how to do it. Or for them, it's just like a series of action which they can't really put down and explain. So I kind of want to hear what is your trading process exactly? What does it look like trading price action for you? Okay. Um, well, I, I do a lot of uh, trend pullbacks. I need momentum. I need the markets to be in a flow. Uh, I can't trade dead markets. Uh, so you won't see me trading, you know, between the US close and Asian open. I, I don't do that stuff. I don't scalp. I'm not looking for, can I make a quick buck and then cross my fingers? Yeah. So I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm looking for more of a strategic planned um, execution where I can sit back and say, okay, I'm in the trade, I've done the best I could, and now the market's gonna tell me. Now the markets are gonna tell me if I'm right. And doing it over the years, it's sort of like you have this connection with the market and the market basically guides you through, like, it's a little bit different today, you ready? And if you're not focused enough, you're gonna be like, but I'm just gonna do whatever I normally do. And that can get you, because the market slightly tips and changes uh, on a day-to-day basis so you'll never get the same trade ever again Mm -hmm. so when it tells you that little different story you need to be so aware and focused that uh, oh i see it's a little change am i ready for that can i do this and is it going to cost me money so uh that that's that's how i approach price action it's just being a little bit more focused so it's about understanding where the market is when you start to trade and kind of being like understanding what you do from there. Yeah, so there is, for me, there's uh, levels of uh, trade, right? So there is the preparation phase, which is very, very important. You, you can't uh, uh, skip that. If you feel you're in a trade and you don't know what to do next, preparation has failed. You got to go back to that. It's not how you do the trade. It's preparation. It's failing there. So you got to master the preparation phase. Then if you know what trades you have to take because you take the trade, but then the trade runs away without you, mm-hmm. then it's the second phase, which is you gotta, you gotta master your entries. How do you time it to get it just right? Then the next phase is once I master the entries, my profits are still low, but my losses are high, but my entries are good. Mm-hmm. Then you have to master trade management. How do I learn to stay in the trade and, and stay with the trade as long as the trade allows me to stay in it with it, rather than panicking and saying, but uh, this is where I should exit, or this is my stop loss, uh, yeah. I made enough money, look at the dollar amount and close, you know? Yeah. That part you have to control. And then the fourth, fourth phase is obviously recapping the whole thing and saying, can I remember this to do it all over again if I see it again? Mm-hmm. Uh, so these four phases are equally important and not one should be overlooked. Yeah. Uh, and that's a huge process you took probably like even years to master and be able to execute right. Yes, uh, and, and you know, you'll actually have, uh, you see a lot of students come to you and they'll go through these phases and a lot of them will tell you, I have a problem with the entering part. Mm-hmm. And then they'll master the entering part, but they'll still not be making money because they don't know what to do after they enter. Because once mm-hmm. they enter, the brain goes blank, They're like, you yeah. know, what do I do now? 
do I do I where do I exit and how should I exit or is it just always 30 pips take profit or 40 pips take profit mm -hmm. you know uh, so it can't be a fixed number and you need to let the market tell you how much you can write it mm -hmm. so uh, that's 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 the fun part I think uh, yeah. out of the journey uh, to learn all these little little steps to make sure you master each stage yeah yeah and being able to adapt so I would love if you can because obviously we are having a chart now but if you can show people what that look like on a chart, I think sure. it would be really helpful. Sure, sure. So if you want, uh, after this interview, uh, yeah. uh, I, I can uh, show you on my screen. We can record it if you want. Uh, that would be awesome, yeah. yeah okay, sure. So guys, we'll put the link below for that. Uh, we'll create a page special for Nevin. It's going to explain to you what he's doing and how he looks at the market. So we'll put that on the side. But check out the link below. That should be the first link. We'll put uh, that description and stuff. If you can watch it, you just have to go to that link and watch that after the interview if you want. Yeah, it's it's gonna be more based on that human psychology part yeah. that we discussed in our previous interview. Um, so maybe this time I can show it to you uh, on a chart, and it might be a lot more. It's easier to understand if it's visual, awesome. right? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. Awesome. No problem. I remember the first time we talked, we, we discussed a little bit of travel, like that you were traveling, you had these routines that you were doing on a daily basis, to kind right. of get back on track. Sure. And trades, and there was some days we didn't trade because we were traveling sometimes. Right. I want to hear from so for someone that wants to do this like almost full time, which, which is like traveling and trading. How should they organize themselves to be able to do it? Are there things that they kind of have to plan first, or can they just like leave and travel and then keep trading at the same time? How do you see this? Actually, you you bring up a very good point about that. Should they leave and travel? I think that should never be done. Like yeah. they they can't just just leave and go because especially if it's your if you're new to traveling, you're so excited about the travel that you can't focus on trading. So you yeah. obviously want to do the travel and trade part once you've traveled a bit already without the pressure of trading. Uh, you yeah, got to travel a bit until you become numb to it a little bit where it's like normal, uh, and then you can travel and trade because you need full focus in trading. There is no half-assing it right like yeah. you gotta be all in you gotta be all in so um you know what i'm about to say it might sound a little bit weird but uh i i look at it in two different ways and and this is this is you know personal to me i'm just gonna explain how i how i look at it um i look at trading and who i am as two separate things okay if i wake up in the morning and i don't feel 100 percent in my a game or i feel tired or lethargic after a meal or anything like that i i can't trade even though I might, you know, in my mind, I have the best strategy in the world, I can't do it. Uh, it won't work because my physical body is uh, and my mental state is not ready for it, right? Um, so getting into that mindset of you're here, you're going to conquer, and you're going to win uh, requires some energy in the mornings uh, when, before you sit or before you sit down to trade. You got to get into battle mode, basically, mm -hmm. right? Um, so... Once you get the mind ready, then you are looking for, now is there an opportunity that has low risk available for me? You need those two aspects together. So when you're traveling and trading, you might get the opportunity, but you yourself might not be ready. I, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, for me that makes sense a lot because there are days where like you don't want to trade. Right. Or you, you feel like you're not in line with what you should do and right. those days are tough. So is it a rule for yourself that like you don't trade those days or you find a way to get, you, get yourself back in the zone? I try to get myself back in the zone, but it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. Uh, and those days, I don't trade. It's it's almost like you want uh, everything to line up in your brain, right? Yeah. Like your mind, your trading, and your opportunity. Everything needs to line up perfectly. I'm like, okay, now I can trade. Yeah. You know? So it, it's sort of like that. Um, but if I don't have those things lined up, there there is uh, there is a feeling of I'm 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 gonna lose today because I I can feel uh, I'm not at my A game, mm -hmm. or at least the first few trades are gonna be losses. So, yeah. so. And the same way, there are days like this where I feel the same about sometimes trading, but sometimes just business and work. Mm -hmm. And I force myself to work sometimes, but then I make right. mistakes. Right. In my trading, I'm more like disciplined of like, I don't trade or I just like do something different. Mm. But when I work, I, I make a mistake with that. So it's, I think, a really good way to kind of stop and reflect back and just take a step back to maybe come back the next day better, yeah. better form. And, and and I I think that's very important. You, you know whether you 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 know you think of this as a new age mumbo jumbo uh, of meditation yeah. and all this stuff, whatever it may be. In the past, they called it being in the flow. Today, they call it meditation. You want to take it ancient times. They say focus. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever label you give it throughout time, it's just a matter of being there for your charts, right? So um, if you can get that to a point where you know you're there. 
uh, then then trading will become a little bit more easier for you because you can notice the little subtle changes in the market that you need to adapt to. Mm-hmm. So, and how would that look like for you? What would you do to get to that level? You mean like physically, like if I'm doing some kind of like yoga or so something like that? So you do like <laughs> yoga, or is it just like a um, I, I, I don't exercise perhaps? I, I, I do stretching. I don't do yoga. Uh, I do I do meditation uh, sometimes twice a day if need be. Um, there is a little trick that I do uh, if I'm not in my A game, and I still trade, and then I lose, uh, and then I win, and then I lose, and I still feel I'm not in my A game. But then I, I use the power of you know sleep, come back the next day and see if you're okay, because the sleep breaks the emotional cycle when you sleep and you wake up. But if you sleep and you wake up and you're reconflicted with the same emotions from yesterday, you're in trouble. You know there's mm. something wrong in your life that you need to fix regardless. But If you sleep and you wake up and you're like, I feel good now, the emotions are all gone, you know, then you can sit down to trade. Sometimes even that doesn't fix it for me. So what I do is then I start to wake up at three o'clock in the morning. Okay. I do that and I start my day at three. The whole city is sleeping. You obviously, you know, see the skyline here. Mm -hmm. It's like a billion people in front of my eyeballs here. But I wake up when the whole city is sleeping and I look at it like the world is now in my hands and... I need to really do what I need to do. Everything's quiet. There's no noise. Everyone's sleeping. uh, And then I get back to my rhythm. So I might wake up in the morning and still not feel it. And I'll play video games. Three o'clock in the morning, I'll play video games. uh, Just to relax or do something. Or I'll take a a long shower and then go hot, hot shower, cold shower, hot shower, cold shower. Just to like spark the body. Wake up, wake up, you know, like focus. Uh... And then I get back into my A game. Uh, so I'll do that for like a week. I'll wake up at three, go to bed at seven, wake up at three, go to bed at seven. Uh, I'll do that until I get my rhythm or mojo back, if you want to call it. Uh, and that works for me. That's my, my personal uh, approach to it. Nice. So, so something people could try, perhaps. They, they, they can. It but works. they have to find what works, works, what works for them Absolutely. As well. Absolutely. Everyone's unique. You, you, mm-hmm. you know, I can't say this works for me, so here's a blueprint. Copy this exactly. Yeah. It's going to work for you. It, maybe it won't. You know? So uh, you can definitely try it and see if it's for you. Yeah. Same thing goes with adding strategies in trading. So a lot of people that we talked about before, they want to copy what you do right. or they want to copy what I do sometimes. Right, right. And I force them to kind of adapt the strategies or the strategy they learned to them. Right, right. Have you seen your students kind of adapt what you teach them also to themselves? And how do, it, how do they do it exactly? Um, I notice most, unfortunately, most cannot adapt. So I actually make my courses in such a way where I force them to adapt. Um, you know, it sounds, you know, communist. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I, I do it in a way where it's subconsciously happening. You know, I, I love teaching as well. Uh, so it, it's sort of a thing I incorporate. So it's not all about do you have the knowledge. It's can you teach that knowledge to a point where how much time, how, how quickly can you turn that student to be like, got it, aha. You know, like I just had my moment. I understood what he's saying. So I take that upon as a challenge as well. Like how, how fast can I turn that uh, aha moment? Uh, uh, so... Yeah, I, I, I force them. I force them by delaying the next course. I force them by saying, uh, I need to see some examples. I force them in all different ways uh, where uh, many times I'll teach backwards. Well, I've, I'll start with something complex and then I'll work my way backwards. And then when they get the basics, they're like, oh, it all makes sense now. I can see why the advanced stuff, uh, you know, how it all fits in like a Lego piece. Uh, so if you, you know, so that, that's my approach to it. Yeah. And I think you really have a good, a good way to teach people, a good way to explain the concepts that people understand pretty quickly. From what I've seen in the past, like the people that follow your course that you shot to me, they mm-hmm. understood like a lot of it or everything pretty much. I, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so. Otherwise, uh, I'm in trouble. Like yeah. that. You know, man. But uh, I have, I would say, I have the world's best students. Uh, they're the nicest people on the planet. Uh, they're very good. They're very intelligent, and they grow fast. Uh, and you know, I couldn't be much prouder than. You know, being their mentor or, you know, slowly also a colleague because their levels are getting really high very quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm happy to be to know them uh, at a personal level as well. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And you told me earlier today that you were working with apps now with technology. So I kind of want to know how these days you use apps or technologies to trade better. Are there things that like you think anyone would need to use? Sure. So, you know, everything that I you know, create is something I need personally. Uh, and then we obviously yeah. release it to the world if you know, see if they want to use it too, and they can. 
a um, lot of my days you know start with what is the larger player doing i can't trade if i don't know what the big boys are doing right you, you want to call it big boys bank hedge funds yeah. whatever the name you want to give it i want to know where the focus in the world is so i use a specific currency strength meter that which we've developed we call it the fx meter it's on the ios store um, and what that does is i first had it built just for me i want to see at a single glance of where's the money flowing and this is not just an indicator measuring these things. We, we use our in-house techniques on how to measure this stuff. So I have uh, a colleague who wakes up every morning and he looks at every single chart, 28 pairs, and he handpicks how the markets are reacting based on everything I've taught him. And he says, okay, today the focus is on US dollar. Okay, and then once we spot that, then it's like okay all energy it's like a lion sitting behind the bushes just looking out and it's like you can see a whole bunch of animals but you want that gazelle right because you know that's the target today it's the same thing i so i use that app as a as i'm traveling i don't want to open up and look at everything one by one so we, we streamlined it and i had my colleague do this for me and i'm like okay every morning i look at the app it tells me an idea of what, what my focus needs to be on. Uh, and that gives me a good 30, I would even say 40% edge on uh, the rest of the world because I pick trades now that have a very, very high chance of winning um, and very low chance of being riskier or spiky trades because those are the worst, right? You're in the right oh, yeah. trade and it spikes you out and then it still goes and you're like, oh, what just happened? <laughs> uh, it's the misunderstanding of where the flow of money is. You need to understand where the flow of money is, then you can avoid spikes as well. Of that, yeah. so that's kind of being able to use something even on your cell phone, where you could be anywhere you want, and still get the, the data. Uh, absolutely, which is pretty big. R right, right. So I have it on my fingertips, and uh, obviously, you know, I don't need to do it myself every time. So I have a colleague do it, so it saves me a lot of time. Yeah. So I wake up in the morning, I can trust that information because it comes from my teachings to my colleague. So I'm like, okay, that data is. is pure data that I can rely on. It's not an indicator that's just following the market, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I need that. Do you ever place trades on your cell phone or is it always on, on a computer? Um, I place trades on my cell phone all the time. I exit from my cell phone all the time, but, but I, I <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> I, I, please do not do this. Uh, it is something I, I, I can say I graduated to, but I do not recommend anyone do this. You need to see the whole picture. You gotta be in front of your screen as appealing as it looks to trade on the go, trade on the fly, trade from the airplane. It's fine, it's great for social media, but it really is, you wanna make money, sit behind a computer nicely, look at the charts, get a full understanding without any distractions, and then say, okay, now I know what to do, I can do it on my cell phone as I'm going through, I don't know, 7-Eleven or something, I don't know. But, yeah. but you gotta get the picture in your head first of what, do I, what needs to be done. Yeah. Uh, and that needs to be no distractions. Mm -hmm. so. A lot of times in the past where I was exiting trade or entering trades on my cell phone was like based on emotion. Like in the moment, I would, saw, I would see a move and I would right. want to enter. Yeah. And that's usually not the right trade you want to put in. Correct. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I agree with that 100%. It, it's all those trades that I've done without knowing on my cell phone because it looks good. I would say 9 out of 10 times I've lost. Mm -hmm. 9 out of 10 times. Maybe 9.9 .9 out of 10 times I've lost. Like, <laughs> those are horrible trades. Yeah. Horrible, horrible but trades. But if you're organized, if you have your, your things you look for and everything, then Correct. that could be a good process to be able to a go Absolutely. Through. Absolutely. Then, then your cell phone is your buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Then you want to, you know, it's good to keep track. Um, here's a little tip I can uh, share with you guys. I, I share it with my senior members. Um, what I actually do, uh, because I do a lot with the flow of money, and uh, maybe I can even share it with you guys when I show you it on the screen what sure. I do things. So uh, what, what I do is sometimes, let's say I, you know, the, the tiger is focusing on US dollar today. And if I'm focusing on US dollar, and I know the entire US dollar group is moving in a certain way, Euro USD, certain way, Pound USD, certain way, USD Yen, certain way, USD Swiss Franc, certain way, you get the idea. The whole US dollar is moving in a certain direction. And if I say I'm gonna trade Pound USD, what I do for my exits, I set alerts throughout the entire US dollar group. The moment my cell phone starts vibrating, the alerts start going off, I'm like, it's time to exit because the entire group is reaching a level of support and resistance that it's going to bounce. So I don't look for that just what, what I see on pound USD, but I look at the whole group as a collective, but I don't watch it to get psychologically sucked in. I put alerts on all of them and then I walk away and then I wait till my, you know, I, whether I'm watching TV or I'm talking or handling business, when my phone starts buzzing, one buzz, I don't care. 
two, three buzzes simultaneously, side by side. Okay, exit, exit. Markets are getting active. Everyone's gonna start jumping in now. I will start exiting because I can sell to them. I can start exiting. So that is a very quick hack on learning how to exit without emotionally getting involved. Mm -hmm. I can relate to this. That's like the power of using notification and alerts to your advantage, which right. I've been using also in the past year. Right. It's been good. pretty useful. So yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah, it's 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 a good point. It's awesome. It, technology doesn't cripple us. It can actually make you stronger, and yeah. you need to learn to embrace it uh, if if you know you accept it. Definitely. So. so guys, make sure you check this out below the link for the video we'll record about the charts, and that's going to be super useful. I'm sure Nevin is always going to give a lot of value and a lot of tips that he didn't share before even. So that's always awesome. And I want to ask Nevin, is there anything we didn't talk about you'd like to mention? Anything that you kind of maybe worked on the past year or any breakthroughs you had this past year that you want to share with people? Well, as far as breakthroughs are concerned, I made it second time on your interview. So that's obviously good, <laughs> right? <laughs> third time. Yeah, third time, actually. Yeah, yeah third time. Uh, so that, that's obviously good. That's a breakthrough for me. And I, I love being on your show. Uh, it, it's great. You're a great person to talk to and do an interview with. So it's, it's always fun, uh, and especially seeing you in person also, yeah. and flying into Bangkok and uh, meeting in person. It's always great. It's always great. Um, uh, you know... Uh, the only thing we've done, I would say, from our last interview we did a year ago with you, uh, until now, it's uh, you know we released a little bit more courses. We did uh, a money management course. You know, remember I discussed about how do you gotta get mm. get rid of that psychological barrier of what does money mean? So I've actually taught money management without numbers. You know, that as as weird as that sounds, that's you know, yeah. yeah, people get shocked by money management. I'm not gonna do that. That's like mathematical stuff you can actually hack it because you need to understand why. So I go deep into the why, give you some techniques on how you should look at your charts in a certain way using money management. And uh, we, we hack through the psychological barriers as well. So it's money management mixed together with psychology around money. So we released that recently. Uh, and then obviously the FX meter app on the iOS store. Uh, it's also coming out on Android soon. So you know these are the latest things we've done so far. Pretty cool changes. Yeah. So how can people find you if they want to connect with you or reach out after this interview? If they want to see what you're doing. Um, so uh, urbanforex.com would be the best place uh, to, to reach out to me. If you want to email me, it's naveen at urbanforex.com. Uh, that's my uh, email address. You can reach out to me. We're doing an event in Thailand in April. We rented out a entire resort in Koh Samui. So we're having some students fly in there. Uh, so that's, that's going to be a great time to gather around. Um, so you know you're welcome to come if you are if you're in town. Uh, it's, it, it'll be fun, and uh, yeah, that, these are the best. These, these are the fastest way to reach me. Um, urbanforex.com uh, as the website, but if you want to get a hold of me personally, then uh, Naveen at urbanforex.com. Awesome, and you've been doing a lot of stuff. I had uh, students reach out the past year from you. I got your course that went to training, and they got a lot of results. So they were happy about it. Yeah, which is awesome. Which is awesome. We have to promote people that really teach the good stuff and teach things that people can apply. And oh, you've okay. been doing an awesome job at that for sure. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You mean the the students that the feedback you're getting? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, from okay. your students. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Right. Yeah. I'm 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 glad to hear. I'm glad yeah. to hear. Awesome. So thank you very much. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, Always we'll, a pleasure. Uh, catch up soon. We'll do. We'll do. Cheers, All man. Right.